Hi, I'm Steve Thompson. I'm Christy Brown. And we're from Emory Thompson Machine, and this is our weekly Questions Answered, where you get to uh, write us or call us with questions, and we'll do our best to answer right. them. What do you got? Okay, so uh, a customer wanted to buy a used machine until hers was completed and built. Um, just don't. It's a waste of your money. It's a waste of time um, because you're going to invest into purchasing another machine uh, wherever you find one used. And good luck because you won't find one in Emory Thompson. And if you do, it's very rare. So I would probably, you know, for those that don't have one yet, you could snag it, but don't buy one and then buy another one just to use until yours is completed. And a lot of people think that they just want to get a head start, jump on the gun, get ready to. Uh, Practice. You don't need practice. Once you get your machine, you're going to make one batch or two, and you figured out already that this is your formula and recipe, and you're done. It's it's, it's that easy. Uh, mine involves uh, Hertz, and I don't mean the car rental company. Okay. It's um, sometimes we look at stuff and we do it every single day, and it doesn't mm -hmm. register to us that nobody would know what we're talking about. We advertise that our machines come in either 60 hertz or 50 hertz. And I get the question quite often, well, which one should I choose? Uh, that's why I've got to explain hertz. When you have electricity, uh, you know that it's either 110 or 220. 110 is plug-in and 220 is your, uh, your uh, clothes dryer or your electric oven or your central air conditioning. But then it gets broken down further into 60 hertz or 50 hertz. 60 hertz is the wave cycles, which you don't have to remember. This is just the wave cycles of the electricity coming through the lines. In the United States, ours are 60 hertz, and in Europe, there and a lot of other places in the world, they're 50 hertz. Uh, it's the same concept, but just different. And so the question is, why do we charge more for 50 hertz machines? It's a all our machines are handmade. Uh, if, if we're going to build it for uh, a country that is 50 hertz, it's a special order. The compressors and motors cost us a little bit more, not a lot, and we pass that small amount of cost on to you. If you're in the United States or if you're in a country that's running on 60 hertz, forget about it. It's no problem. It's just the standard way we build them. Correct. Well, you got to keep going because I'm saving that maple bacon for the last. I had to keep going. All right. Well, then going. I'm going to ask you a question. Christy is here this morning after having traveled all over the United States, mainly <laughs> to Penn State, which it's a lovely place, but not in the middle of or the end of January. It's freezing cold. So it was a, cold. Was it 11 below? You said no. It was one, but it that's, felt that's but it felt bad. 11 below. <laughs> anyway, you were there teaching uh, and demonstrating our machinery at uh, Ice Cream 101 at Penn State. Yes. So now you can go around like I've been doing for years and tell all your friends you're a professor emeritus of Penn State. Oh yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> that and four bucks will get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're a professor emeritus. So you told me that one of the things that went on is uh, you were making ice cream on our machine mm -hmm. and there was another company right, was no. making, we won't mention the name, uh, was also making ice cream. Yes. And you were putting all the cookies into the machine. Yes. And if you had nuts or candies, everything was going in. What did they say? What do they do? They were very surprised. One gentleman even came up and said, can, can you open the hatch? Can I, can I really see that? And I said, well, sure. So I opened it and uh, the little lid on top and I, he peeked in and he goes, I can't believe you just put all those cookies in there. He goes, what else can you put in there? I said, anything. I said, candies, nuts, uh, anything you want. You can shove a whole pie in there, a cake. As long as it's not nuts and bolts, you can really put anything into the Emory Thompson. And what does the competition do? Um, they couldn't. They made a uh, plain vanilla Jane, plain Jane vanilla ice cream, and as the ice cream came out, then they added the inclusions by hand folding it. It was vanilla ice cream with inclusions. It wasn't cookie butter ice cream. So basically, what we want the people to know is our machines are designed to throw everything but the kitchen sink into the machine. It means you're going to have a much better flavor because. Mm -hmm. If you put half your cookies into the machine and you blindfold and you taste it, you know exactly what the flavor is. Mm -hmm. So instead of making uh, vanilla ice cream with cookies in it, you made real cookie butter ice cookie cream butter with ice cookies cream. in there. And then you added some as it was coming out. 
Nope, we didn't. We didn't have to. The Emory Thompson broke those cookies up so beautifully. We put uh, exactly the right amount of cookies needed, and it came out with a cookie in every single bite at the perfect bite piece to, to even eat. I mean, it, it was great. And that really is the difference between commercial ice cream and homemade because haagen began with us uh, a long time ago. I helped put them in business. And uh, that was the way their ice cream was made. Today, it is all made on a thousand gallon an hour machine. It is a, a, called a continuous freezer. It rams the ice cream through as vanilla and then the cookies are added at the end. So it's still vanilla, it's vanilla ice cream with cookies, whereas the homemade made method, all the ingredients mm -hmm. go right in there. So you had a big question last week of uh, making a product and which one was the public gonna choose? What happened? Well, we had quite a few people uh, email me with the flavor they wanted, and it, all the flavors had pretty much the same amount of votes, so we made it all in one. And so we did a candid, uh, candied maple bacon ice cream. I was off at Penn State, so I commissioned my husband to actually make the ice cream. I, <laughs> I gave him a, a rundown. Poor basic, Mickey. I know. <laughs> gave him a basic rundown on the formula and told him just go from this and then taste it and see what you needed. He got it first try right off the bat, and it was fantastic. So you're doing a blind taste. Okay. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Steve is not. Do I have to put not, on a blindfold? No, but Steve has not tried it yet, and so I'm very anxious to see. Okay. All right. So this flavor is what again? Candied maple bacon ice cream. And since I can't double dip, I'm going to take a big portion here. With maple syrup. Mmm. Oh. So what do you think? And the bacon stayed crunchy. It stayed crunchy, it did. This is great. He candied the bacon uh, with some brown sugar and maple syrup, and uh, he added some brown sugar into the machine, some vanilla, some uh, more syrup. Um, it's fantastic, guys. If you would like my husband's recipe, not mine, uh, it was kind of basics of mine, uh, just send me an email and I'll be happy to share it with you. Now you told me that um, you thought that putting bacon into ice cream would make it soggy. I would. Um, why didn't it get soggy? I'm pretty sure because he candied it. He did it in the oven and he dipped with the bacon in brown mm. sugar and maple syrup. You can double dip, but it can be your pint. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then uh, he just slowly baked it into the mm. oven and let it caramelize and get nice and crispy and it kept its texture. Uh-oh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, I'm just going to sit here and just continue eating this. <laughs> <laughs> we have more questions, but we'll get to them next week. Freezing times of ice cream, uh, how long does it take? And uh, that's a very subjective question because it's like baking. Everybody does it differently. But if you have questions, write to Christy at emerythompson.com, Steve at emerythompson.com, or give us a call. Don't forget to sign up and uh, watch our weekly video that we send out of Flavor of the Week uh, every Monday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. I'm going back to this. Okay, sounds good. This is great. It's, I it's really very like good. This. <laughs> do you, mm. honestly? <laughs> can we do another flavor next week? Yeah, well, what are we going to make? I don't care. We as can... long as I get to eat it. <laughs>